We're talking about 10 minutes in the world. A daily dose of God's word as we rightly divide. 10 minutes in the world. To prepare you for the judgment seat of Christ. 10 minutes in the world. To get your full reward properly edified with 10 minutes in the world. Hi, welcome to 10 Minutes in the Word with Brother Ron Knight. I am Brother Ron Knight of Northern California Grace Fellowship near Sacramento, California. The goal of this short study is to give you a dose of God's Word with us, to get you prepared for the judgment seat of Christ, to get a full reward. So let's begin. Today's study is again in the book of Romans. Now when studying the Bible, we always need to keep in mind that while all the Bible is for us, that is written for our learning and we need to know it. Not every book of the Bible and not every verse in the Bible is written directly to us and about us living today. When you rightly divide the word of truth, as Paul commands in 2 Timothy 2.15, you understand that it is the 13 letters of the Apostle Paul, Romans through Philemon, that speak both to us as well as about us today in the dispensation of grace. So let's begin our look at the book of Romans. Romans chapter number 1 is where we left off, down in verse number 21. Paul writes, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. You know, my friend, the greatest way for us as believers to be like the heathen is not to give thanks to God. You know, Paul always says, to be thankful and the heathen were not thankful um, for for the, the 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 wonderful blessings that God gave them the last couple of times we saw that in Acts 17 Paul had to tell the tell these heathen Athenians uh, those those uh, people in Greece over there in Mars Hill that that the God of, of create of creation of the God of creation was one who needed nothing he, he, didn't ha he didn't need uh, to be worshipped with men's hands and so forth. But God created man to manifest forth his glory. And my friend, it is that glory that, this, that mankind has what Paul says earlier. He says they hold the truth in unrighteousness. They, they um, suppress the truth. And notice he says in verse 21, because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. They didn't give him the glory that was due his name. Neither were thankful, thankful for all of his blessings, but became vain, vain as empty and useless in their imaginations. They, 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 began, they began to think about things without God in their knowledge. It says God is not in all their thoughts in the scriptures. And their foolish heart was darkened. You know, the Bible talks about the fool says in his heart, there is no God. And that foolishness, having thoughts that aren't uh, based upon the truth of Almighty God, the truth of his word, uh, that's what happens. Uh, God talks about, through the Apostle Paul, that the wisdom of God is foolishness unto men, and the wisdom of this world is foolishness unto God. Paul calls in 1 Corinthians 1, he talks about the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. And Paul has a lot to say about being a fool. He tells the Galatians in Galatians 3, he says, Oh, foolish Galatians. Um, I'm going to be a little frank with you. Uh, that word foolishness has to do with um, the issue of it's stupid. You know, when the Bible says over in Psalms, the fools has said in his heart, there is no God. You know, you know, uh, the Bible is basically saying, you know, that's stupid. It, it's stupid to believe there's no God. With all the evidence that God, you know, people, these atheists always talk about, I need evidence, I need proof. What well, well, we saw from the Romans chapter 1, Paul says, For that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they're without excuse. I mean, God put in every man, he put in mankind, Adam, and man, uh, the 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 ability to know him we saw there in Acts 17 
if they might uh, uh, happily feel after him, for he's not far from every one of us. But in, in him, we, we uh, live and move and have our being. It's stupid. And, oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? We're going to be going through our Galatian studies at our, at our assembly. We're, we're studying that, that passage over in Galatians 3. It's, it's stupid. Why do you let someone come and bewitch you? Uh, put, you put you under a spell. It says about Simon the sorcerer, uh, he bewitched the people, Acts 8. He was using satanic power to, to confuse them and to, and to lie to them. Um, bewitched. Uh, the, the witch over there in, in, in 1 Samuel excuse me, in, in, in the book of Samuel there, he, t he talks about when, when Saul goes to the witch at Endor. That's why they get the, the name Endora for Bewitched, that old uh, uh, show from the, I believe, the 60s or 70s. Samantha the witch, her mother's Endora, the witch of Endor. And, and, and she brought up Samuel from the dead. And, 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 and the Galatians allowed the, the these, 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 uh, Men, people call them Judaizers, but they are legalists, to, to take a, a something that was dead, the law, it was abolished, it was crucified on the cross with Christ, and, and allow them to, to resurrect that thing into the, to the lives of these grace believers. And he says, oh foolish Galatians, over there, 1 Corinthians 15, as Paul deals with the resurrection, the physical bodily resurrection, he says on 1 Corinthians 15, he says, Someone says, well, well, what type of body would it come up? He says, thou fool. Knowest thou that it, something has to die and, and, and it dies with one body, a seed, and it comes up with a different body that God has given it? Yeah, it goes into the ground, one body, and it comes up a different body. He says, that's how it's going to be in the resurrection. You die in a corruptible body and so forth, it comes up incorruptible. But Paul says, thou fool. Okay. Paul says to the Ephesians, he says, he says, he says, walk as wise and not as fools. Don't walk. He says, don't walk, not understanding uh, the word of God, having God not in your thoughts. Here he says, professing themselves to be wise. Well, here in verse 21 of Romans 1, he says, and their foolish heart was darkened. See, when you when you walk in your own wisdom, being wise, so-called wise in your own conceits, your 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 hearts get darkened. Uh, when you reject the light that God gives you, He takes even the light that you have away. Um, darkness. God wants us to respond to the light of His Word. He'll give us more light, but when we reject the light of His Word, He He gives us darkness. Their foolish heart was dark and their stupid hearts were dark. Professing themselves to be wise, verse 22, they became fools. You know, these, these intellectual people, people are, some people are born with greater intellect than others. But my friend, intellect, you know, the, the ability to be smart and so forth, born that way, especially, or, or, or you know, whether it's by uh, nature, you're born that way, or nurture, you, you, you're, you're taught in, in, the, in, the, in the classrooms of, of this of this world, the government classrooms, it's just foolishness with God. It, all it does is make you pompous and make you trust your own wisdom. Let not the wise man trust in his wisdom, Paul says over there in 1 Corinthians. No, it's foolishness. And, and Isaiah says it too, uh, Jeremiah. He says, don't, don't trust in your intellect. Use your intellect for God. I know a lot of smart guys, intellectual men, a lot more intellectual than me. Some, some of my uh, closest friends and brothers but they don't allow their intellect to to be the thing that runs them they allow the word of god to temper that yeah use your use your brain uh to to, to worship god to serve god in the mystery well he says professing themselves to be wise they became fools you know it's interesting that on the college campuses of the day these 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 little uh you know these greeks these you know it's the, it's the greek philosophy all these philosophers don't know nothing about nothing. It talks about, they call themselves professors. Isn't that interesting? Professors. Well, here in Romans chapter 1, verse 22, Paul says, professing themselves to be wise, you know, wise in their own conceits, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Look at that. All they do is going to worship man, make worship themselves. 
and to birds, things that fly around in, 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 the, in the first heaven here, and four-footed beast, you know, all type of beast of the field. You ever notice they really like bulls with horns, right? I come from Chicago as a foot, uh, uh, basketball team, the Chicago Bulls. And they got bulls everywhere downtown Chicago, horns. Represents Satan. Represents the, the, the ox, the, the, uh, the cherubim. Anyway, four-footed beast and creeping things. You know, we're going to get into this passage here uh, in Romans chapter 1, on down to verse 32. It's a great passage, but we come to the end of our 10 minutes in the Word. Um, just a reminder, Paul says, if, you, if you're, if you're uh, learning the Word, if, you, if you're joining us for these studies, um, as we put them on each day or every other day, um, depending on time with ministry, um, please remember us. It, it, is, it is good to give back. This is part of our daily labor in, in the ministry. Uh, I, I decided to dedicate my entire life to saints and ministry of the word. Well, uh, Paul says it is right to give back. The labor is worthy of his hire and so forth. Galatians 6, if you're being taught, give back. So we actually remember our family and our ministry in your prayers and monthly support. If you are saved today, that means you're members of the body of Christ, which means we're members one of another, brothers and sisters in Christ. That means we're family. You know, we're coming up on uh, Thanksgiving in this country and the, the world needs a, a day to give thanks. And we grace believers, Paul says, and everything give thanks. We're to thank God every day. But it's a time where families get together. And, uh, you know, I wonder who atheists are thankful to. You know, they're giving Thanksgiving. They're, they're, they say, oh, we, we're going to get thanks together. Who are they giving thanks to? I don't know. But anyway, it's family, right? We need to treat each other as family. It's a time to come together. Well, the body of Christ is a family, so let's treat each other as such. Ephesians 4.32 And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Okay? And if you're not saved today, today is the day of salvation, 2 Corinthians, Paul says. Okay? The Lord Jesus Christ shed his precious blood on Calvary's cross for your sin. He died for your sin. Why don't you trust him? No works today. We live in the dispensation of grace. The free gift, God's riches at Christ's expense. Why don't you trust him? And we'll help you get that full reward after your salvation, okay? All right, well, we come to the end of our study. We'll see you next time. Until then, I am Ron Knight saying, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. I'm talking about 10 minutes in the world. A daily dose of God's word as we rightly divide Ten minutes in the word To prepare you for the judgment seat of Christ Ten minutes in the word To get your full reward properly at a wide way Ten minutes in the word Did you know them one day God gives you and me 1,440 minutes in a day To learn about our Savior and His grace And the revelation of the mystery And Paul's epistles keeping memory By spending just 10 minutes in the Word a daily dose of God's word as we rightly divide Ten minutes in the word To prepare you for the judgment seat of Christ Ten minutes in the word To get your full reward properly at a fine way Ten minutes in the word